Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today Unity just launched a heck of a lot of products into beta. Uh, and we're going to be taking a look at what they are all about. Now, they're all under the moniker of Unity Gaming Services, and the nice part is, while they are in beta, they are also free. We've also got some details on pricing. We will get to that in just a second. But first, we're going to look at what exactly Unity Gaming Services is and what it means to you as a developer. We're going to start with the Unity blog. Now, this is an encompassment of a, a number of existing things and a number of new features. So some of this is SDK level, some of this is uh, web service level, some of this is existing products such as Unity Ads. So you'll see here they're saying our mission at Unity is to provide the tools you need to make your game successful. So that is why we are so excited to announce a suite of new tools and services that simplify any developer's ability to create cross-platform multiplayer games. Say hello to Unity Gaming Services. Blah, 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 blah. So Go on down, they are now in open beta, you can try it out, um, and then it is free to start, transparent pricing, you only pay as your game scales up. Again, we'll get back to the pricing details in a second. Now this is a number of different pieces. Powering online play has always been a challenge, and it can be difficult to strike the balance between speed, performance, and features. And let's just say, when it comes to uh, networking, it can be a challenge in the world of Unity anyways. We switched uh, networking backends a handful of times now, and that's also part of this announcement, by the way. Um, so with Unity Gaming Services, you could create connected online gameplay with cloud-enabled tools, services, and infrastructures. This includes in-game voice and chat, uh, net code for game objects. That's the new networking aspect of Unity. We'll get back to that one in a minute. And our new open beta tools. These open tools are available today, Relay and Lobby. Relay enables multiplayer peer-to-peer -peer experiences by connecting peer-hosted players with the new Relay service and the uh, Unity Transport package. So that's a way of doing peer-to-peer -peer networking. And Lobby uh, empowers players to play together with custom private or public rooms for multiplayer experiences. So both things um, uh, that are currently a challenge and generally would require third-party code or services now. Uh, so Relay and Lobby are definitely two of the newest products here. Uh, both are attached to the Unity netcode and transport to automatically get your, your game online straight from the Unity editor. So uh, netcode is a big part of this. Uh, then we got a bunch of live op tools. Those are the things that once your game has actually gone live where you monitor how people play it, and you keep up to things, and so on. And a couple other things are um, kind of important to the, the developer themselves. So we've got cloud code, creates serverless functions where game logic can interact with other backend services without going through heavy platform release process. Cloud save allows you to track and store player data, including player abilities, statistics, and more, enabling cross-device accounts for your storage. So basically, uh, online game-ready storage there. Economy makes it easy to define in-game currencies and store players' balances. Obviously, that's your in-app purchases there. And you can even manage your economy in real time without updating the game client. And authentication allows you to sign an account to a player coming in and attach all the data generated by the back-end product to each player. So this is your authentication servers, um, kind of the equivalent of OAuth or any other kind of login. Everybody, and I mean everybody, wants a piece of this pie. And part of that actually comes down to some changes in the do not track laws, where if you're considered first party, which OAuth servers are, you can kind of track your users across different sessions, whereas if you are not, you can't. So that's why all of a sudden you, you see everybody and their dog offering free authentication services. Um, it's definitely a very valuable thing that with changes to the way privacy laws work will become more so as we go forward. Um, once your data pipelines are in place, uh, perfect the player experience with dynamic content updates using our established player engagement tools, deploy personalized content and marketing strategies at scale without any code. All the insights you need in one place. So here's where we get into the analytics stuff. Equip students with, uh, studios, not students, uh, with the ability to easily understand game performance and player behaviors through predefined dashboards, data explorer, and more, and cloud diagnostics gives you real-time error monitoring to enable uh, to resolve crashes and exceptions impacting your game. Uh, and then we've got things like game growth. Here's where their Unity ads come in. Uh, they've got in-app purchases on this side. Uh, our suite of monetization tools also includes mediation, which increases ad demand from top networks by driving more competition for players' attention. Now, I do have to say, Unity ads have always been really, really successful. So if you're looking to monetize your game via ads, Unity ads is definitely something you want to check out. Um, try UGS as you develop your title without breaking your budget. It's free to start. <laughs> that sounds like a drug dealer. Uh, anyways, and you only pay for what you need. Uh, once in the Unity dashboard, you can choose your own SDK depending on your needs. Our products have multi-environment uh, support where you can view and manage your product deployment from dev to production. So that is the announcement. So we've got, if you go to the Unity Gaming Service page, they do have a trailer available, uh, but you get an idea of 
all of the different products they have now. So we've got uh, Vivox or Vivox. That's a voice communications company. They bought uh, 2019, I believe it was. So if you want to have in-game voice comms, uh, and this is actually used in quite a few commercial games. I think PUBG uses it amongst others. Uh, Netcode, this one is obviously important because a lot of this stuff like Relay and Lobby are built on top of it. This is the next generation networking solution for Unity. Unfortunately, Unity is kind of putting you into the regular trap you've got in that you're kind of building your solution today around beta technology and things coming out of beta in the world of Unity can be a little problematic. Uh, so we got Relay, Lobby, uh, and we got other things going on here. Cloud code, cloud safes, basically your data in the cloud. Um, and we got uh, economy and authentication. So if you're doing in-app purchases or you have your game's economy and you want to make it dynamic, you can control it that way. And of course, authentication, which we basically all know what that is at this point. And we got another number of them here. Analytics is the new one now in beta. Mediation is a new improvement to their ad solution. So they have done quite a bit on this end and they've got a number of products here. Now, in terms of pricing, once again, while it is in beta, it is free. And so here you can see how the pricing is going to be. So at the free tier, you're getting five gigabytes of storage, a thousand writes a month, a thousand reads a month, the cloud save, or it's gonna cost $50 a gig, oh, sorry, 50 cents a gigabyte, and then a per transaction cost. Economy, 10,000 writes, uh, one well, sorry, 10, 100,000 writes, uh, 1 million reads for free or a per usage thing. Uh, cl cl uh, I can't speak today. Uh, cloud, cloud, cl cloud, cloud code. And if you put those words together, you get cloud. Um, again, you see what you're getting for free versus the uh, transactional cost. It's actually pretty reasonable cost from what I'm seeing so far, but it's always hard to tell exactly how much of this stuff you're going to get. And I'm actually kind of curious. Cloud content delivery just basically sounds like they're doing a CDN, uh, which is kind of a owning a bunch of servers around the world to get your content closer to the uh, end user so the downloads are faster and more resilient if part of the network goes down. And 50 gigabytes a month. Now, I do know Game From Scratch runs on Cloudflare, and I get reports all the time. And let's just say I go way over 50 gigabytes a month of traffic with Cloudflare just on the Game From Scratch website. So do keep in mind, these sound like humongous numbers. They're not as big as you think when it comes to traffic that way. Um, and we get into the analytics and player engagement costs. So 25 million events a month. But you're seeing here, most of these free tier things, they're at the level that a lot of indie games would never have to move beyond, which is actually kind of impressive. Uh, and we come down to lobby. Uh, bandwidth is free up to 10 gigabytes of, uh, so when you're doing your networking traffic, you're being charged on a um, amount of data sent kind of basis. And that's quite reasonable as well. Uh, then we're getting into their other products. Here's where it's a little bit less detailed. So Multiplay and Vivox, uh, and um, those ones are con contact us if you need to know, which tends to mean ouch. Um, and then we get Relay. There is a free tier. It supports up to 50 concurrent users. Standard tier uh, supports up to 51 to 200. Premium tier, 200. to see. I don't understand this chart. Oh, sorry, the pricing is flipped from before. Okay, so you go free tier. So if you need more than 50 concurrent users in Relay, uh, you jump up to the standard tier and then you're paying a per uh, cost basis here. And then the premium tier is 200 plus concurrent users uh, and so on. So if you look at these, uh, the pricing structure here, realistically, the free price is quite reasonable. Uh, and you're really only going to pay if you're successful. And I always like pricing like that because, it, quite frankly, it gives you a very low barrier to um, get in there, but it also doesn't massively balloon if you're successful, so they're not milking you on the back end. So that is that reasonable pricing. I'll, of course, link this in the linked article down below. However, oh, no, one more thing before I get to the however, uh, and that is the uh, Unity net code. So the, this is their new uh, launch off thing. So you can check out the the roadmap on. I think I did a video about this in the past. I know I definitely covered this in a previous release video, but this is their new networking solution um, that's coming in the future. Just do keep in mind that it is coming in the future, which is always a bit problematic. Um, so you can see where they intend to go with it. Here are the things that are uh, so ex ex experimental release at this point. I think we're now calling that beta release. So you got things like RPC, a client networking model, netcode for hosted games, and so on. But there's a lot of things that are still being uh, added or upgraded. 
So that is definitely one of the challenges. Do you want to use, say, Relay or uh, the matchmaking services that are built on beta level tech right now? That That's a little scary, especially, again, uh, Unity has changed networking stacks a few times. So you come on down here to the, the facts, you'll see, uh, oh, they, they took them away. There used to be some things about what about the old way. Uh, and then in terms of, when will it be production ready? It, well, it's not yet. And that's kind of the scary thing. All these things, all these beta services are being built on technology that technically isn't production ready. Now, obviously it is a priority for them. And I imagine that a lot of the services we are looking at today are big drivers for the future growth of revenue at Unity. So they're definitely going to be a priority, but that is a bit of a red flag. Their network services is definitely an uh, in development setup, by the way, the open source aspect of it, you can go and check it out if you wish. So uh, the the game object stuff is all um, open source. I don't know what license, oh, MIT license. So it's actually under a real open source license too. Uh, so that's the nice thing about this is, is while it's super important, um, it, it's also pretty transparent on where they're at with it. And, and if they do something really stupid, uh, you can always fork it and support things yourself. Of course, you need to um, keep, stay compliant with their backend systems for their backend systems to continue to work. But at least it is an open source project. So you should get the net code for game objects aspect at least is. Um, so hopefully that is kind of going to give people a little bit more peace of mind on this one. But yeah, something to be aware of. And the other thing to be aware of is Epic Games. And it's always the case with Unreal Engine, there is a counterpart on the Unreal on the uh, sorry, with Unity Engine, there's a counterpart on the Unreal Engine side every single time. And this is no exception. And quite frankly, Epic beat them to the punch already. And I've done some videos on this. Uh, they have launched their game services as well. And generally, they're free. So that is the kicker. So they're building their own multiplayer, matchmaking, peer-to-peer, -peer, voice comms, connectivity, leaderboards, online storage, uh, operation stuff, and so on. Uh, so... And they're also game engine agnostic. So as you can see here, uh, you can use it with Unreal, but you can also use it with Unity. You can use it with Lumberyard, or the artist previously known as the Lumberyard, now known as O3DE. You can use it with Godot, uh, and it works on a number of different uh, stores out there. So you can see here, matchmaking lobbies, peer-to-peer -peer leaderboards, stats, achievements, player data storage, game analytics, player ticketing, player sanctions, player reports, title storage, voice comms, and anti-cheating. And why did I read them? Right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right, because I could. Uh, so they do have their own systems as well. And generally, once again, I, I'm not going to say that they're 100% free, but I think they are. I think every service here is pretty much free. So uh, yeah, that that's definitely the thing that Unity needs to be aware of. So today, they did launch their uh, Unity gaming services pretty much almost like tick box for tick box. If we go through all of the stuff I just talked about, all of these various different services we've got here, uh, they kind of launched a comparable. Uh, although um, there are areas where there's not overlap. Unity has ads, which by the way are very good. So do check out Unity ads if you're looking for mon mon yeah, monetization. Um, they do not have player sanctioning or, or you know basically disciplining system. I don't think they have an anti-cheat in there yet. And their Vivox, Vivox or Vivox uh, solution is commercial as opposed to the Unreal Engine one, uh, which is free. But definitely a big announcement here that is Unity's gaming services, a bunch of products. And the big new ones for beta here are definitely Netcode, which is what it's kind of all built upon, Relay, Lobby, uh, the new analytics, cloud save, economy, authentication, cloud, uh, cl cloud, we'll call that one, and mediation are all new now. And again, the pricing, uh, well, not 100% free like a certain offering, uh, is actually quite reasonable. Uh, it's free well in beta, and you'll notice here the free tier, you could definitely run a small to mid-sized game uh, for the most part here. The only part where I start wondering if you're going to run into catch is if you use the relay this looks like kind of a number that you would hit pretty early, even on a minorly successful game. And then um, again, the uh, CDN or the, count, the cloud content delivery, uh, that looks like a huge number. Uh, but let's say your game is two gigabytes in size and you push it out to, uh, say, uh, 25 users. Huh, it's gone. Uh, so do beware, cloud content delivery, that can add up really, really fast. But uh, you also look at the cost here. Uh, I almost wonder if this was an... I'm starting to think this is an error. I think this should be terabyte 
because if you look at the pricing here, it's after 50 terabytes, it's 0 0.06 per gigabyte. So the economy scaling seems so you you like they're talking terabyte numbers on this side of things. So I'm not 100% certain here, uh, but for the most part, all of the freebie pricing uh, is good to go. And if you need CDN, most, I actually think a lot of games probably don't need a, a CDN type solution. But uh, if you do, that's the only one where I'd kind of watch on the cost. And I do wonder, again, if this pricing is, if they meant terabytes. Mind you, 50 terabytes a month. That's huge. So I'm not sure. Uh, let me know what you think of uh, Unity's new cloud services in general. Uh, are you already using the uh, Epic game services? Are you using anything on the back end? Now, one of the things I've noticed is there's been a lot of companies, commercial companies that tried to do this as third parties, and a lot of them are gone now. So having the first party companies do these things actually gives you a little bit more peace of mind or reliability. Uh, but it's, yeah, if your game is multiplayer and needs a back end, a lot of times rolling your own doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, especially if you're starting to do stuff to manage over the lifestyle of your game. So if you're doing A-B testing or you're doing, um, you know, customer retention reporting or uh, you need to do lobbies and voice chat and so on, rolling all of this stuff yourself seems to be pretty bad. Having your own servers, even paying AWS to do stuff, uh, you'll find that AWS pricing, uh, like S3, which is what they use for storage, this looks cheaper than S3's pricing. So why not just get something that's geared towards game development? You just need to hope that the services will be alive as long as your game continues to be alive. So that is the announcement. What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Will you be checking it out? And all the rest. Talk to you later. Goodbye.